And this is something special for these people that Allah Ta'ala has given. And it is the offspring of these individuals that if you look at the greatness of these people's lives, the likeness of Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, the likeness of Sayyidina Ali Zayn al-Abdeen, the likeness of Sayyidina Muhammad al-Baqir, the likeness of Sayyidina Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, the likeness of Sayyidina Imam Ali al-Uray, the likeness of Sayyidina Imam Musa al-Qalim, Sayyidina Imam Ali al-Ridha, the likeness of all of these great Imams that into this day where there is the true Sada al-Hasinin Husseinin on the face of this earth, that they are the Safina to Nur. They are like Noah's Ark, and there's a hadith, even though there in it is some weakness that our Prophet said, is that the likeness of my family is the likeness of Noah's Ark. And that anyone who boarded ship was saved, and anyone who didn't, drowned. And so it is through the Ahl Bayt that we come to know what is the proper uh, stance that we can take in every single time. Because in another hadith that has multiple narrations, that our Prophet informed us, Sallallahu Alaihi him that I've left among you two things. The Book of Allah, and in the more authentic narration, my family. A lot of times you don't hear that quoted. Here, mashallah, there's a lot of muhibbin. But in many other places, they only quote the narration about his sunnah. But in the more authentic narration, he says that I left among you the Book of Allah, and in different narrations, some of them say, Habdullah al Mateen, Mabdum in Samaid al Abd. It is the uh, rope of Allah that is extended from the heaven, heavens to the earth. And my family, Itrati Ahl al Bayti. My Itra, my family, the people of my house. That these two will never separate until they come to me at the Hawd, at his basin. And so meaning that there always will be in every single time the elect righteous Sunnis of Ahl al-Bayt of Rasulillah that will give you the correct understanding of how to interpret the meanings of the Qur'an and the verses in light of the time that you live in. And this is one of the most essential important things that we have to understand. is because every single group and sect uses the Qur'an to prove their sect. So, as many people say, well, how do we know who are the rightly guided scholars? It's very simple. One, fas'alu ahli dhikri. Ask the people of remembrance. Any scholar that is truly rightly guided will always be a people person of dhikr. Two, see if this person is really following the sunnah of the Prophet I mean, his description has come clearly to us in the seerah. Three, that look especially to those from the Ahlul Bayt. And see this network of scholars that to this day, that we could give you a list of my very limited knowledge of scholars, of my very, with, even with my very limited knowledge, hundreds of scholars from California and America, all the way, I don't know about Hawaii, but to the Far East. And it's interesting that, 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 that California is like the furthest frontier, right? Because Hawaii, they actually, when we pray in California, that we pray Northeast, most people. And so you're in California and you're praying northeast, okay? Uh, it's a lot easier to determine here when you're in Europe because it's, you're, you're not on the other side of the, the world. It takes us a long time to get here from California. But if you go to Hawaii, which is in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, they face uh, west. So the, the Qibla for them is the opposite direction. They face west and towards the other direction. But the point of this being, is, is that there's a worldwide network of rightly guided scholars that they themselves have been share, sharing their asanid and their chains back and forth. So it's very clear who Ahlul Sunnah is. There's no difficulty in determining the rightly guided traditional scholars. That there's virtually no country on the face of this earth, even though it's a little bit harder in our time to find these true people, except that you can find these people. And so that once you realize that, and you understand that this network exists, that it's easy for you to determine what is the stance that you should be taking in the time that we live in. Everyone has to look at their own context. And it's from this understanding that we can have is the importance of the living scholar in the living tradition. Our tradition is alive. It's not a tradition in the, search, in the path of something that, oh, these are all great imams from 100, 200, 300 years ago. Yes, we come from a long line of great imams, but no, they have not died. They're still alive today. In every century there's going to be a mujaddid and a renewer. In every century that our Prophet Sallallahu told us that that there will always remain a group of my ummah outwardly apparently manifesting the truth. Always and every time. 
That there's no fitna and there's no tribulation except that Allah will bring forth and create people that will deal with that tribulation. There is no challenge that will come to Islam, whether it's philosophical, whether it's social, whether it's political, whether it's economical, or any way except that Allah Ta'ala will bring forth people that will be able to deal in, with that challenge. This is a reality. This is one of the manifestations of Allah's words. <laughs> we indeed, we have revealed the reminder and we have taken upon ourselves to preserve it. One of the greatest meanings of this preservation is the living scholar who helps you understand what is the appropriate thing for you to do in our time. Because there's people that have a desire to serve the deen and that they want to serve it correctly, but they don't understand how to do it. They don't understand their deen correctly, nor do they understand how to channel that energy. And a lot of times if you cannot channel your energy in the place that it's supposed to be channeled, you will end up disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you're wanting to obey Him and draw near to Him. And you'll end up doing things that will lead you to be in serious trouble in the next world. 